Call of Duty Vanguard is a special game with special soul and innovative features. Said no one ever. Just like the Vanguard beta, innovation and evolution are over. Despite being set in World War II, this game treats it as nothing more than a paint over. But, in exchange for not conforming to the setting and hard innovation, this game launches with 20 maps, 16 of which are full-size main mode maps, which means that this game as a product strength is quantity over quality. What you doing, I got a year to develop, eh? In addition, each weapon through the evolved gunsmith system can now hold 10 customized attachment slots simultaneously, which greatly increases the depth upon which a player can build a playstyle. Yeah, gotta give it that, yeah. This is unfortunately where the hard innovation ends, and, and while the choices stand, it just sucks big time that they couldn't make more out of the setting. The appeal and form of the assaulting Wehrmacht and its Soviet, American, British, French, or related major national forces in the most historic prime in worldwide conflict, standing against them is a vestigial fashion of appeal most expressed in a World War II setting. But, instead of capturing this unique setting opportunity, Big Daddy Activision and Sledgehammer Games, the little bitch, went instead with the generic hero character roster under the veil of a single special operations unit, comprising of soldiers of various nationalities donning their specific gear. Which then entirely negates faction difference in both appearance and function, since the same character, the same nationality, and the same appearance, and the same exact location of a butt cheek wound, appears in both teams and at all times. Which? of course, was done to conform to the modern warfare and Black Ops Cold War standards of monetization and to integrate the war zone and sell a ton of specific operator skins. Who would have thunk it? The sheer insane quantity of weapon attachments up to 10 base game slots at the same time allows, as in previous Call of Duties, for varied and asymmetric gameplay, increasing the game's depth and extending weapon functions in benefit and drawbacks to fuel a ton of gameplay variety. But man, man, with the presence of a metric load of fictional, uh, synchronistic, or partially existing obscure attachments, such as laser red dot size, yeah, square, drum magazines, alternate calibers, extended barrels, suppressors, and stocks, and a storm give you a fear and fitty, or other weapons. Which, all to be fair, undoubtedly result in varied and diverse ways to tackle gunplay, strategy, and maneuverability, in combination with the fact that there's a lack of World War II intrinsic national factions, completely. Makes you in no doubt and entirely validly question as to why this game is set in World War II. If the core five says in both feature and limitation that make this setting as special and beloved as it is, are completely disregarded in favor of tried and true same old, same old. It's quite crazy, Zoltaten, and a matter that confounds deeply. But not really, since the developers would be hard-pressed to mass sell a game whose gunplay depth was stripped down to stock weapons in a franchise that has grown to rely on its strength to compete with its peers for interest and player retention, and is arcade and casual, one that will feel empty without this extension, and yes, worse to play. So, in simple terms, the only thing making Vanguard a World War II game are the visual resources, such as the setting and characters, as well as the base weapons, minus the fact that not even a digested and expunged, mind you. Sea Sponge, with an iron deficiency, would run a stock gun, without the advantage of, uh, artistically liberal attachments. LIBERALS! LIBERALS! None of the previously mentioned factors special to the Second World War, national factions, period-limited weaponry, the pivotal role of newly advanced vehicles, and the context of battle are paid any attention to or included in a supposedly World War II shooter. If the developers instead chose to concede where they needed to with the vast customization of weapons, which constitutes gameplay depth, and not do so with the visual and context design, with national factions and their visual, audio, and perhaps some functional gameplay difference, the setting of choice would actually be justified and make sense. Why you choose to make World War II game without including things that make World War II setting special? Even with some gameplay concession, it acts only as skin. And so it does indeed. Even Modern Warfare, on whose engine and basis this game was made on, allows players to choose faction default soldiers, which differ from faction to faction. There's two. But in this game, the only difference from one faction to another is who's taking the sausage barrage and who's giving it. Clearly, there was never any actual practical intent to honor this important thing that the World War II setting offers, and which is required to be so to actually make it a World War II game. It's cold, all right. Oh, and you can shoot down totally not obviously placed wooden barricades now. The weapon design in this game makes me wish that Sledgehammer went with the supposed leaked premise of a post-World War II alternate history game that could have possibly extended into the 1950s. They would address some of these concerns and it would actually tackle new ground in a unique setting with new opportunities, especially in a World War II game that lets the player equip 10 attachments, two more than its predecessor Cold War and five more than its engine origin title Modern Warfare, and one that increases the total number of attachments by a long shot. 
with, for example, grip options increasing from Modern Warfare 3 and Cold War 6 to a massive 10. It does look like Sledgehammer's intent was to make extensive customization the pivot gameplay element of Vanguard, in the most bizarre setting for it. And well is the only measurable thing that improved compared to previous games. All the present characters and in Hollywood joke voice acting feel like exaggerated but yet somewhat cult stereotypes. A professional but endearing British paratrooper. The on the field with fake X and Russian scout. A cocky over the top Aussie, oh, yeah. Bobby Pins! Dish served cold, but still tasty. Throwing a grenade! Think after you what? I've been dreaming about this moment. It would help if the soldiers in the insanely dense smoke-filled battlefield of war would actually sound like they're being shelled or shot at or the like. But that would require effort. And effort requires ta minus five social credit for the criticism of the main regime. <laughs> the visual clutter in this game is demonic. It's like I've entered Castro's personal office, nailed shut of each and every vent, opening or orifice, after three months worth of Cuban cigars, five downtown LA trash barrels in full flame, and a half-broken Golf 2 active at full engine inside. As clouds of discharge, barrage, or grenade smoke, or whatever snow up your view. Your gun should not smoke it up big time like a German camp dumping it out before the Reds come in. The simulation and depiction of weapon way through the sound design, which is permanent, and the animations, which may be subject to change, but most likely are not, are unfortunately greatly inferior to modern warfare, and don't depict weapons in any serious manner. Big thumbs down on that, and a great and puzzling shame given the inheritance of an engine that is commonly marveled as best in industry history. Of course, when it comes to this matter. And definitely not the manner in which you prevent people from messing with the game code and ruin everyone else's experience, yes? Charlie is ours. Baker is overrun. Hostile recon in the air. Spies in the sky. Baker is ours. Get the hell up already. That kind of sucks. It's like someone took a sledgehammer and smashed up the big good that it was into a lesser self. I'm honestly surprised at the massive quality downgrade and the failure to provide anything outstanding or new. Haha, <laughs> JK, it's Call of Duty. This is the most generic Call of Duty game of the last 10 years. Huh, before that, they actually broke new ground. It is the epitome of run of the mill, the yearly sure to deliver cash cow with no pressure vector to innovate, and metric tons of casual buyers to hop right on the chugging train of Oma Boiva. In fact, due to the wars and integration, the purchase numbers and fat stacks will be way more plentiful, because the meta will shift to favor the new Vanguard weapons to get people to buy bundles in the game to power level competitive guns. So, what's there to expect? They didn't, and they won't. It's raining money. But then again, 20 maps, 40 weapons, <laughs> you know, not, not a bad deal. Discord link in description. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord link in description.